Here's more wrestling news for January 19th, 2023, and we're starting off with the Royal Rumble, and this year's show will be the sixth time that fans will see a women's Royal Rumble match. Since 2018, Asuka, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Bianca Belair, and Ronda Rousey have won the 30-woman match, and WWE is seeking some outside help to determine who's next. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful reports that Jason Cade, a veteran of the Indies, has been brought into WWE for one specific reason, to help with this year's Women's Rumble match. Tyson Kidd, who has worked as a producer in the women's division for years, will also be helping, and Kidd had a big hand in bringing Cade in. Cade has trained with Kidd and Natalya in the past, and while he has worked on WWE TV in the past, the veteran has served as enhancement talent. Fightful said that they have not been told whether this is a one-off for Cade, a trial, or the start of a full-time job, but the veteran, with experience on Raw, NXT, 205 Live, AEW, ROH, Impact, GCW, and others, will bring his experience to this year's Women's Royal Rumble match. It's been over a month since Xavier Woods last competed on TV, and there's been plenty of speculation about his condition. Well, during an interview with the New York Post, Xavier Woods confirmed reports that Woods has not been cleared to compete, but said that his fellow NXT tag champion has made a lot of progress. On this week's NXT, it was confirmed that the New Day will defend their titles against Pretty Deadly and Gallus at NXT Vengeance Day on February 4th, but that match hinges on Woods being cleared in time. At this very moment in AEW, Brian Danielson is fighting for a shot at MJF's World Championship and must win every match he's in on Dynamite leading up to February 8th to do so. If Danielson does get a title shot though, then their match at AEW Revolution will be a 60-minute Iron Man match, which many expect will favor the veteran wrestler. Kurt Angle knows all about endurance during a match, and on his Kurt Angle podcast, questioned how the holder of the big Burberry belt will be able to hang. Well, that's going to be good. I don't know how MJF is going to hold up, but I know Daniel Bryan will do pretty well. This week's Dynamite saw Danielson defeat Bandito to keep his hopes alive, but with MJF warning the ex-WWE superstar that he'll see a monster next week, it remains to be seen what the champion has in store. But what do you think of Kurt's comments? Can MJF hang with Danielson in an Iron Man match? Let us know in the comments. This week's Dynamite had plenty of names appear on the show, but there was also an interesting name who stayed behind the scenes. For years, Summer Rae was a mainstay on WWE programming before her release in October 2017, but she was backstage at last night's Dynamite. On Instagram, Renee Paquette shared proof of Summer Rae being backstage in the latest interesting move by the former superstar. It was earlier this month that Summer Rae was spotted training in the ring with Liv Morgan, and she was also present backstage at the January 2nd edition of Raw. The latest report from WWE is that there are no plans to bring Summer Rae back full-time, but between this appearance at Dynamite and the Women's Royal Rumble coming up, we may see her back in the ring very soon. During his 15 months away from WWE, Bray Wyatt didn't wrestle, but one thing he did do is get engaged to former WWE personality JoJo Offerman. The two met during their times in WWE, and during the Bellas podcast, JoJo confirmed that they have set a date for the wedding. All we know about this date is that it will be in 2023, and we can only hope that Uncle Howdy isn't the best man at the joyous ceremony. Now, Will Ospreay is regarded as one of the best professional wrestlers of the past decade and just recently stole the show at Wrestle Kingdom 17 against Kenny Omega. Ospreay has faced several great wrestlers throughout his career, but has opened up about his own battles with himself. Speaking on the sessions with Rene Paquette, Ospreay addressed being diagnosed with ADHD years ago and the effect the condition has had on his life. I got diagnosed with ADHD in 2019 because I felt like there was something wrong with me. I was dyslexic after I finished school. The only things I passed was drama and PE. English, math, science, all the things that you need to get to college, I failed that. I just had to go to work. I wanted to try to get to college, and then I went through something. I felt like the term used was learning syndrome, and I can't remember what it was, but they said it was a form of dyslexia. I don't read very well, I'm not very good at writing, I've always struggled with that. Sometimes I tweet something and I haven't read it properly, so it's a bunch of spelling mistakes. It's proper embarrassing. A grown ass man, I have a mortgage, and I can't even read and write. Osprey also addressed the possibility that he has autism, saying, 
The autism thing, I went through a doctor thing. I think it was the start of 2020. The pandemic kicked in and I've never wrote back. I do feel I'm on the spectrum, but I haven't had that guarantee. The other two, I got diagnosed. The other one, I've still yet to have answers for. The wait list is fucking long. Even if I did have it, I don't see it as a detriment. I see it as a superpower. All of us autistic kids were so much better than regular normal people. We can lock into shit and do it. To all my autism kids out there, we're top. Osprey has never shied away from addressing these parts of him, but he isn't letting them stop his quest to become one of the greatest wrestlers ever, a goal that looks more obtainable with each match he has. Back to WWE and it's safe to say that things are pretty chaotic right now, with all talk being about Vince McMahon's return and a potential sale. With McMahon back and the possibility that the Saudi PIF will soon run the company, it's not hard to imagine that morale has taken a significant dip from what it was just a few months ago. Speaking on his Strictly Business podcast, Eric Bischoff gave some advice and said that it's easy for talent to get caught in an emotional death spiral, especially if they keep following the news on social media. Bischoff argued that this time actually presents a fantastic opportunity to talent, as with everything changing, WWE's management will look to which wrestlers have the best attitudes right now. If a WWE superstar can remain positive at a time like this, then WWE may consider them for a future push, but with plenty of questions about the company's future yet to be answered, staying positive is much easier said than done. If you've watched any classic matches from Triple H, you'll notice how much of the game's heel work was inspired by Ric Flair, who the WWE's head of creative idolized growing up. Therefore, it was a treat for Triple H when Flair returned to WWE in 2001 and would later become his mentor on and off screen, but their relationship has not always been easy. When Flair left WWE in 2021, he did so on very poor terms with the company, believing that the creative for him and his daughter Charlotte were not up to the standard he expected. At the time, Flair said he had a falling out with Triple H, but on the latest to be the man, said that they have since reconciled. As I said, we've had our differences, but I think he does a great job in creative. And we've repaired that, you know? I apologized and we didn't, I just, my problem is, I guess the older I get, the more I just want everybody to be happy. Does that make sense? That never is gonna happen in life, but you wouldn't want to see anybody just be unhappy, and I want him and Stephanie to be happy. Triple H is now head of WWE's creative, a role that fans are eager for him to keep, and with Flair appearing on next week's Raw, we'll have to see what the game has in store for his mentor. And we're ending with more from Flair, who had his final match last July, and despite reports to the contrary, has no plans to wrestle again. On his podcast, Flair made it clear he will not wrestle again and does not understand where reports of him begging to have another match have come from. Well, it was on the previous episode of To Be The Man that Flair spoke about wanting another go at his much panned final match, saying, I'm begging to do it again, I'm begging. Flair's memory may not be what it once was, but Flair has now confirmed that he doesn't want to lace up his boots one last time, but whether Flair will stick with his view for long is anybody's guess.